rest upon us. The first ballot will be cast in less than 72 hours. Let's tonight cut to the chase. Let's not confuse, addle our minds with what is not necessary. The BJP needs just 273 seats to return to power. Don't forget that, viewers. 272 is the halfway mark. 273 is a simple majority. While the Prime Minister talks about Char Par, and while we all obsess about whether the BJP will fall short of the mark or cross it or not, the fact is that even if the BJP does not get more than 330 or 340 or 350 seats, it won't lose the election. All the BJP needs is to get to 273 for the Prime Minister to equal Nehru's record and return three consecutive times to power as Prime Minister. As things stand, the BJP, barring some unforeseen happenstance, looks well placed thanks to the North. Yes, viewers, the North, the geography. Here, out of 224 seats, barring Gujarat, Bengal and the Northeast, the BJP holds 90% of those seats, viewers. That's almost 201 or 202 seats. Till the opposition alliance doesn't dent the BJP in the North, it has no chance of stopping the BJP from getting a simple majority. Now, why am I telling you all this? It is because here in the North, the BJP has done something that most political parties have never been able to achieve. That is, consolidate the Hindu vote across caste lines, around emotional issues linked directly to community pride. The Ram Mandir in Ayodhya being the foremost. And that's the reason why Prime Minister Modi, even two days ahead of the first phase, has continued to contrast his party, the BJP's self-proclaimed devotion to Lord Ram, to the alleged dereliction of the opposition. Realizing that Ram is the proverbial Hindu Hriday Samrat all across India, Prime Minister Modi questioned Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee's commitment to Ram today, barely a day after accusing Rahul Gandhi and Stalin of the same. Now, viewers, if the Hindu vote remains stable in the North, the BJP is assured to get the same number of seats it got in 2019 and roughly the same number in the North that it got in 2014. Viewers, it will only be around 70 short. And with Gujarat's 26 out of 26, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Gujarat, as I said, Bengal, Orissa, Northeast, the South, all remaining. The BJP can only hope for a bounty. Viewers, it is therefore why the BJP believes and its principal campaigner believes that Ram is the glue. Not just in the North. They are convinced even in Rameshwaram, almost the tip of India in the south and viewers, of course, in Bengal, Northeast, Odisha, everywhere. And therefore, viewers, Modi's constant stress on this fault line. Listen. Ye pehli Ram Naomi hai. जब अयोध्या में भव्य राम मंदिर में राम लला विराजमान हो चुके हैं मुझे पता है टीएमसी ने हमेशा की तरह यहां राम नवमी उत्सव को रोकने की पूरी कोशिश की सारे सड़ियंत्र किए, लेकिन 
जीत सत्य की ही होती है इसलिए कोर्ट से अनुमति मिल गई है और कल पूरी श्रद्धा और भक्ति के साथ राम नवमी की शोभा यात्राएं निकलेगी साथियों पीएमसी के बंगाल में किस चीज की परमिशन मिलेगी किसकी परमिशन नहीं मिलेगी ये कानून तय नहीं करता ये पीएमसी के तोलाबाज और गुंडे तय करते हैं बंगाल में राम नवमी की शोभा यात्रा की परमिशन नहीं मिलती उसके लिए श्रद्धालुओं को कोर्ट जाना पड़ता है लेकिन रामनवमी और दुर्गा पूजा की शोभा यात्राओं पर पत्थर फेंकने वालों को पीएमसी सरकार ने पूरी परमिशन दे रखी है एज इज इम्प्लिसिट From Modi's words, the Prime Minister is hoping that BJP's Ram card will also strike a note with Bengal's Hindu voters. The PM's cause has been coincidentally helped by the courts that have rejected moves to block Ram Navami processions in some pockets of the state, citing the possibility of law and order problems. So, viewers, the courts today said that these Ram Navami. processions will go on subject to a few conditions maximum 200 participants for ram navami processions while i can't understand viewers why they are capped it's not as if any other denominations functions are also capped by numbers i mean no one imposes no court in this country imposes a, a number on the size of the congregation any church in any masjid in our country but of course in secular india the court will do so but that's a completely different matter of yours anyhow the ram navami procession can go on limited to 200 participants display of any weapons barred during the processions only one vehicle for the idol of lord ram can be used in a rally court warns against the raising of provocative slogans organizers have ordered to take out rallies on separate days VHP for instance will hold the procession on April 17 in Howrah Anjani Putra Sena their procession will go out on 21st in Howrah the BJP's ram card has succeeded because the opposition has at least in the public eye been guilty of keeping a distance from important symbols of ram bhakti most crucially the ram mandir viewers you will note you will recall that the ram janmabhoomi movement totally recast the politics of the north catapulting the bjp to power but viewers despite knowing this the opposition has chosen to at least publicly in their declarations keep an arm lens from ram for example karnataka's minister k n rajna He said BJP's Ram Mandir campaign is purely political. This is Mr. Rajana. BJP kept two dolls in a tent and called it Lord Ram. This is what was said by him. And the context was of course the inauguration of the Ram temple and the invitations that had been given out personally to various opposition leaders to attend. Then of course there is a DMK leader who says Ram birth is a myth. BJP is replacing history with mythology. Uh, viewers, do these leaders ever question the beliefs of the followers of other religions? Would they say the same about the gods, the deities of other faiths that they are myths, they never born this that the other? No viewers they won't. They won't. Ramendu Roy TMC MLA said no Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja. Why? Why should the TMC MLA say this? He went on to say only a show of peace has been built in Ayodhya, a show of peace. 
The question that has to be asked is whether this seeming antipathy to an icon of Hindu hearts and the PM's Ram hater barbs singe the opposition or not. Or simply put, why will the majority community vote for parties that have traditionally not taken pride in their religious symbols? This is the basic question, viewers, that we are going to ask about 72 hours ahead of the first phase. Let's open this up. Let's not delay this conversation. Sanjay Jha, it's a very simple question. We all know the politics of, as you know, the rise and fall of political parties. We all understand how the BJP has managed to consolidate this Hindu vote. And I'm asking you, why hasn't a party like the Congress learnt its lessons? Why should Hindus, Mr. Jha, choose to vote for a party like the Congress that has traditionally not taken pride in the religious symbols of the majority community, for instance? That's what the BJP will ask you. Can you furnish an answer? The Ram Mandir is a matter of faith to millions of Hindus and the Supreme Court, Supreme Court ordered its construction. There was no reason why the Congress party should have stayed away. Okay, Rahul, let me answer you with two, uh, two basically key points. Number one, that I think the Prime Minister looks definitely very disturbed and disconcerted. Yesterday, I watched him on ANI, and he was openly lying on electoral bonds. He was openly lying. I mean, today he's been fact-checked, and I can't imagine a prime minister of a country whose government has been shamed by the Supreme Court on electoral bonds for being opaque, for being corrupt, for being criminal, for being a crony capitalist, trying to say it will actually you know, stop the black money. Sorry, you'll regret it, apparently. I mean, I can't imagine a bigger farce than that. But let me address your principal question. I'll tell you why he's worried. Go back, Rahul, to the survey recently done by Lokniti CSDS. You know, what are the four key issues in the minds of the people? I live in Maharashtra. Rahul, you have lived in Mumbai for a long time. Trust me, Maharashtra is going to give you a stunning result in 2024 Lok Sabha. And whoever wins Maharashtra is likely to be there in Delhi. Here is the point. The Lokniti survey clearly has said that the four principal issues that dominate the average voter across the country, one, un unemployment, second, price rise, third, development, fourth, corruption. At number five and six are Ram Mandir and Hindutva. Between them, they aggregate 10% and they're coming at five and six. Clearly, the message is out. You know, everyone who's following <clears throat> politics knows what has happened to the BJP Rahul. A lot of them believed, and including BJP supporters, I think two of them are there on the on the program. They believed that Pran Pratishta on January 22nd meant that the election was done and dusted. As they have discovered to their extremely rude surprise, India is a beautiful, diverse country. And every state has got its own way of looking at the way they want their government to perform. When you look at the fundamentals, this government has flopped. And the data tells you that 55% of people believe corruption has gone up. And it's not just electoral bond corruption. It's across the board. People are seeing that this government has actually fooled us. And I'll keep saying that. June 4th, the famous Pathan dialogue will come alive. Okay. And I think sure. Mr. Modi is a sharp political leader. He's sensing the change in the mood of the people. And you know, can you imagine? And you know, after this, I don't want to say anything, say anything further. But when Narendra Modi called the Congress manifesto a Muslim League document, I actually, if I had any respect for him, that went not just to zero but diminished. And what was he talking about? 
can you imagine how desperate he's become that he said every page of the congress manifesto was a document that was going to divide india is paying more to manrega dividing india is giving job reservations to women dividing india is giving money to the unemployed youth as a right to apprenticeship dividing india is providing women in a family rupees 1 lakh dividing india i mean what a shameful comment from the head of the largest democracy okay. in this country there is panic okay the so of let me show. let me bring in let me bring in the other side you see you're talking about providing providing the bjp has already provided by the way they have done so, nothing so so one second no one see this is the They've same sanjay ja one second sir i'll just ask you a couple of follow up questions rhetorically not posed to you just to the viewers this is the same sanjay ja viewers me. this is the same sanjay ja who sat here on this channel on my show and said that the bjp will be losing the congress will be winning chatisgarh madhya pradesh and rajasthan the same sanjay ja views well, many posts and how he got it wrong that's all right how he got it wrong that's all right many posters he said maybe were maybe saying that wrong. could it be the csds have also got it wrong after all viewers i'll ask you and you google sitting in your homes you probably have a phone you might have your uh, son and daughter next to you who might already be on their computer just find out how many people each day have visited the ram mandir since its inauguration on january 22nd the csds capture this nonsense yours i'll give you that answer but first tweet me the number let's see how many of you actually engage with this and you will find out you'll be astonished to know the numbers viewers it goes into crores yes january 22nd till today how many just check so i don't know what the csds is talking about that it is of no consequence when you travel to a destination viewers you are doing three things you are spending money hard earned money which according to sanjay ja is so hard to come by these days that is savings why would you be doing it if it didn't matter to you of course rahul gandhi would say because you can have free, free drinks there as he said once about kashi nonetheless that's a different matter so viewers people are spending their hard earned money they have spent their hard earned money contributing to the making of the ram mandir not a rupee from the state exchequer went into that and we are saying that they don't care about the ram mandir it comes very low on their priority list who is this csds viewers there are dime a dozen of these organizations at one time it was headed by a person who had joined the congress party do you know this viewers how do you know that legacy doesn't extend still into the csds i'm not i'm not in any way rubbishing anyone i'm only saying it's just one of the many out there just like sanjay jha said it is one of the many who told me that the congress was sweeping the north so viewers there goes that defense then let's just to talk a little bit about the electoral bonds that sanjay jha has again raised yes it was struck down by the supreme court and yes the supreme court is part viewers and i'm saying it with great responsibility of a news of an old system that has come back where you will not even know who gave what to whom so we are back to that old system and you just have to ask the election commission how much money is being recovered on a daily basis they put the number out yesterday just google it where is that money coming from if there is no black money in the system viewers think about that and if it was such a corrupt instrument that sanjay jha is talking about why is the congress allowed it or used it to collect 1300 crores should it not return that money well viewers you think about all these things but one second i, I only i have only place rhetoric i am not pointing these questions at anybody sanjay jha because i know because i know that your response will again be a bunch of water boutry so one minute i'll bring i'll come back to you let the others have a crack at this okay. let the others have a crack at this karan verma before i bring in the bjp spokesperson and before i bring in the other critic of the bjp professor monojit mondol 
Karmana, what do you make of Sanjay Jha's response and the Prime Minister's principal focus today? You know, very factual and very brief, uh, Rahul. Uh, somebody, first of all, needs to cancel Sanjay Jha's OTT subscription. He's clearly binging on a lot of spy thrillers like Pathan and God knows what all to come up with such lies. Uh, number one, when he talks about electoral bonds, in 2013, just one statistic, Rahul, 85% of Congress's funds, which was 3,300 crores at that time, was from unknown sources. I mean, imagine Sanjay Jha waxing eloquent about talking about transparency. This is the system on which electoral bonds is an improvement where we at least know where the money is coming from and where it's going and it's all in the formalized system. So that is number one. Then he talks of unemployment. Periodic labor force survey tells us that unemployment is at a record low of 3.1%. Inflation is 5%. It used to be double digit for 22 months during the UPA regime. Pranam Mukherjee and P. Chidambaram used to pass the football to each other saying the other is responsible for inflation. So that is what you left in the first place. Then he talks about foreign exchange economy, $650 billion foreign exchange. Just this month, Sanjay Jha, GST collections is the second highest ever. I mean, in which parallel universe are you residing? to come up and say that, you know, these are the issues and people are starving. People are quite well off. And as far as the Mandir economy is concerned, from Virasat to Vikas, Rahul, this is a model. 3 lakh crores is what our temple economy is worth. Just the last month, as per CAIT, trade worth 50,000 crores occurred in Ayodhya itself. It has the potential to create 1 million tourist jobs this year itself. So for all those who used to say whether temple can give us jobs or not, Today, our economy is centered around that and it has received a serious, serious boost. It has sentiments attached. You clearly don't understand sentiments when you can file an affidavit and say Ram does not exist. You did not even visit on 22nd January. Your leaders can visit Babar's tomb who says I will be an infidel. I will massacre all infidels. You can visit their tomb. You don't visit the Ram Mandir. So clearly you don't have sentiments. But at least at least face the hard numbers, how people are getting jobs, how our economy is growing leaps and bounds because of this. Okay, uh, let me bring in Professor Mondol. Professor Mondol, the fact of the matter is this, that today, whether you like it or not, the Bengal administration has been tied in with an attempt to block Ram Navami, which was sanctioned by the court. This is a fact. So no, no, no. You Why also... would you deny so many Hindus an opportunity to take pride yeah, nobody. The in a government, festival. The Bengal government will never deny any real Hindu, the practitioner of Ram Lala's ideology, to go with Ram Navani celebration. But those goons who were creating mayhem one year ago, investigated now by NIA, nothing has actually happened. Because NIA now understands that most of the people who are caught nabbing by the Bengal police are from BJP. The Bengal government will do their best to restrain these hooligans in the name of Hinduism to celebrate Ram Naomi the way they wanted to do by mm. playing DJ, dancing with brandishing gun and sword. Even the court has come down heavily upon these people that you are not allowed to take any form of weapon, whether sword or gun. That's why lies the victory of the Bengal government. I mean, you had to sum with the other, Mr. Rahul Shankar, cast aspersion the Honorable High Court of Calcutta. That why capping on the number? Because when the court have now realized that what they were doing last year, these BJP goons and hooligans, by you know visiting a particular communities, uh, you know, uh, you know, gully and brandishing the sword, they are responsible for creating this mayhem, and they might create this mayhem. So court has reasonable apprehension to cap them, to restrain them, and Bengal government, I think, has won. They are like the victory. Yes, anyone who wishes to celebrate Lord Rama's ideology peacefully, even the TMCs do celebrate. Even normal, common people do celebrate Ram Naomi. Nobody creates this kind of mayhem. Nobody creates this kind of Allah Bala. This has been done for years, for thousands of years. People okay. have been celebrating Ram Naomi in this land. Nothing has happened. Nothing, nothing of this kind of hype has been done. Gone. This kind of hype has been created and the government has to come in. Though the government is now actually virtually run by the Election Commission of India. So you also blame the Election Commission of India for you know accepting this ban, accepting this capping. Okay. You can't do that. Let me bring yeah, in the yeah, BJP yeah, spokesperson to respond to Professor Mondol. Respond Professor uh, to Professor Mondol to Insina. 
Well, good evening, Rahul. Good evening, everybody. You know, leaders like Mamta Banerjee draw their inspiration clearly, very clearly from Sirajit Dola and Hussein Shaheed Sohrawardi. And the only inspiration seems to be to subjugate Hindu population and Hindu sentiments. You would recall that last year there was unbridled violence against Hindus during Ram Naomi, as a result of which on 27th April 2023, based on the initial report of a fact-finding committee led by, you know, a retired judge from Patna High Court, it was the High Court, the Calcutta High Court, which transferred their case to NIA. And in July last year, the Supreme Court had, uh, had basically quashed Mamta Banerjee's plea against, uh, you know, giving the case to NIA. So please don't, uh, it was not our decision to bring the result? NIA. It was validated by both the Calcutta High Court and Calcutta High Court and the Supreme Court. Now, how many times has Vamta Banerjee been reprimanding on the, uh, reprimanded on this issue? You would recall that a few years ago, she had major problems with, with uh, you know, the, the, the Shara immersion taking place along with, along with Muharram. And so she banned uh, the, the Shara procession. Again, the Cal Calcutta High Court had, had intervened and ruled in favor of, uh, you know, the, the immersion taking place on the same day. In June 2021, it was the Calcutta High Court which, uh, you know, gave the case to NHRC, which, uh, which brought in NHRC to investigate the case of violence against Hindus post, post uh, poll in 2021. So Mamta Banerjee is a repeat offender. You know, it is this mentality of Mamta Banerjee. And, and by the way, I need to bring in what has happened in neighboring, neighboring Jharkhand today. Okay. You know, when, when, when police was checking out through drones, it, at least six buildings stone pulls you know stones in large numbers were recovered which were potentially going to be employed to attack ramnomi processions now this is what happens not just in mamta banerjee's bengal this is a common occurrence in many indi alliance uh, okay you let know, me quickly bring in today, professor mondo this is the result of big accusations of being made by mr sinha backed mm -hmm. by fact but let me professor mondo ask you a simple question your MLA said no Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer the puja. And this person was Ramendo Roy. I'm quoting him exactly. His quote is going to come up on your screen. Only a showpiece has been built in Ayodhya. What will you say now when I tell you that 1.7 lakh pilgrims on a daily basis are visiting the Ram Mandir? More yes. would have, more I would have, have except that the BJP... UP government has put a cap. So, is Ramendu Roy completely, completely and utterly in contempt of Hindu sentiments? First of all, I'm not surprised by the, the baggage of lies spoken by my... No, no, please respond Pujiti. to the question I asked. No, 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 I'll, I'll, no, no he, I have to rebut him because he was misquoting Mamtadi. <coughs> he was distorting facts about Mamtadi. But I'm not surprised because that's the, their prime minister also does the same thing as right. my good friend. And, and you're honest to God. Out. And you are honest to God when you talk about the BJP and more honest than more honest than more honest than more honest than a good reporter like you and some of the BJP spokesmen. Right, I have a minute thirty on the show. No, no. Let. So get to the point. Ramindu Roy, the TMC MLA said, he's on record. No Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja, but the Hindus have offered puja in record numbers. Your 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 narrative might be suiting because of what he has said. But nobody is bothered about Nandu Rai. Whoever wants How to is it my narrative? Ramindu, the statement yes, has been made by Ramindu Roy. You have okay. been visibly, visibly cheesed okay. because of the Kakana High Viewers, Kakana. look at your screens. You are, you are questioning the Kakana Look at your, Kakana. look at your, look at, listen. I, I can so question, I can question, I can question any oh, judgment. I can question any judgment. One second. Okay, don't get so worked up. Don't get so worked up. Professor Mondol, don't get so worked up. Particular judge, I'm naming that particular judge. Don't get so worked up. Don't, don't get so worked up. You are questioning the intent of the justice. I am not questioning the intent of the justice. I am con no, no, no. I am only contesting the point that was made. Okay, okay, okay. I, I can't, I can't speak over you, sir, because you are just shouting and you are losing your rag. Calm down, sir. Calm down. Be, be calm. Be calm. There is a difference. There is a difference. Okay, you are telling the facts. Okay, now let me tell you viewers, Ramendu Roy, TMC, MLA, that quote is on your screens. No Hindu should visit unholy Ram Mandir to offer puja. Please check the details. 1.7 lakh a day. And the only reason that number is 1.7 lakh and not more is because there is a cap. 
And therefore, I'm asking viewers, has the Prime Minister's constant jibes, constant attacks on the opposition, labeling them Ram haters, singe the opposition in this first phase and the remaining phases? It's the principal question. I don't know if you were satisfied by the opposition spokespeople's answers. I leave it at that. I'll take a short break. I'll be right back. Don't go away. समय है गरीब परिवार की महिलाओं के सालाना एक लाख रुपए पाने का समय है कांग्रेस को चुनने का हाथ बदलेगा हालात मैडम जी वो सारे पैसे लेके भाग गए दिखाते हैं इनको डीलर निकाल दे इसके बाद पंक्चर के बाद भी इससे हवा नहीं निकलेगी क्योंकि ये है जेके पंक्चर गार्ड टायर जो कील लगने के बाद भी होता है ही जेके पंक्चर गार्ड टायर अब हवा नहीं निकलेगी कौन सा तार काटू लाल यारा सो टेल अस व्हाट यू ब्रिंग टू द टेबल पर बोला जब नींद होगी ब्रेक फ्री तभी तो दिन होगा टेंशन फ्री इसीलिए घर ले आइए पेनासोनिक ट्रू स्मार्ट एसी विद कस्टम स्लीप प्रोफाइल इंडिया फर्स्ट मेटर इनबिल्ड आर एसी Introducing the TDS Apache RTR 310, the freestyle. Work without gold, incomplete. Because as a gold owner, you have the power to make bold decisions, to balance risks and returns, the power to buy and sell right at your fingertips, making gold your strategic advantage. Without which your portfolio is incomplete. Power your portfolio with gold. World Gold Council. लाखों की संख्या में श्रद्धालु पहुँचे अयोध्या परसों की प्रतीक्षा के बाद हमारे अयोध्या का गौरव लौटा है नहीं तो पहले टेंट टूटे घाट गंदगी कोई फैसिलिटी नहीं और अब काशी देखो केदारनाथ देखो उज्जैन देखो सोमनाथ देखो सब भव्य दिव्य और मोदी जी कहते हैं ये तो बस ट्रेलर है आस्था का परिचम लहराता रहे ये है मोदी की गारंटी इसलिए हमारा पहला वोट मोदी को ये है हमारी भी गारंटी कमल का बटन दबाए भाजपा को जिताए व्यूअर्स Maoist terrorists have been killed in Chhattisgarh. Twenty-nine of them have been killed in the Kankar district, the Kankar district, uh, including top commanders. Let's go straight across to Arunima for more on this. Arunima, this seems to be a major, major operation conducted by the BSF, and it seems that it has ended in great and glorious success for the security forces involved in this. The para forces have gunned down twenty-nine Maoist. some of them are top commanders and viewers of course this is a state in which at one point maoists controlled almost 30 to 40% of the territory i want to go straight across to arunima for more details arunima give us the facts of this particular counter operation this happened in the kanker kanker is uh, one of those initial districts of uh, naxal affected uh, chhattisgarh when you move from raipur towards bastar So in Kanker, there was a specific information that was received by the central agencies, by the state police and the paramilitary forces, and a joint operation was launched around two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there was some success that was achieved by the joint forces immediately uh, after gunfire began. Uh, there, there was uh, there was reports that Naxals have uh, suffered major setbacks. Initial numbers that were given were about 18, but search operation subsequently threw up more dead bodies. 29 uh, naxals have been uh, identified so far uh, and the search operation is still being carried out uh, three jawans have been injured in that in that operation they have been given medical care medical aid uh, these are jawans from bsf who were involved ak47 rifles insas slr 0.303 rifles and huge quantities of arms and ammunition have been recovered from this area what is also significant is the kind of casualty in terms of the designation that the naxals have suffered 
there is a one person who's called shankar and another lady commander from the naxal force called lalita both of them are dvcm so, and they they are senior commanders of the north buster division they are believed to be among those killed so it's a serious setback for cpm well thanks indeed arunima for that update we're going to constantly give you more updates as we proceed into the evening viewers because this looks like one of those big clean up operations that can break the back of this maoist insurgency that has been raging in a troublesome manner for years all together but finally over which it appears that the state is gaining control and upper hand let's move on viewers because it is poll season in just about 3 days tamil nadu will of course cast the ballot and we are seeing a very very interesting competition there it's a triangular fight in most seats and that hasn't happened in a credible manner in many many decades in tamil nadu perhaps never viewers tamil sai sondarajan as well as mr annamalai are leading this challenge for the bharatiya janata party tamil sai sandurajan is the bjp candidate from chennai south she was of course former telangana governor and she is aspiring to be a giant killer on the other hand in bengal not in the first phase but in the ensuing phases we have rekha patra the lady in the middle of your screens in the blue sari She is the BJP candidate from Basihat. It's very interesting viewers because she's a survivor of molestation that was conducted in Sandesh Khali in an organized manner not against just her but several other women who couldn't bring themselves to complain because of the unvarnished terror that had been unleashed by a TMC linked local leader Sheikh Shah Jahan who was finally arrested viewers after a massive manhunt that extended more than 50 days now viewers both these ladies are up against tall odds but as you know viewers from the 2019 elections those sometimes become of academic interest because the unfavored sometimes springs massive surprise Smriti Irani did it of course in Amethi against Rahul Gandhi. Can Tamil Sai Sondarajan and Rekha Patra do it for their party the BJP in Tamil Nadu and Bengal? Both have been favored by the prime minister both in fact the prime minister has campaigned for he in fact went out and called Rekha Patra the equivalent of a goddess of a goddess slaying evil let's first speak to tamil sai sondarajan your excellency thank you for taking the time out i know that uh, the campaign is upon you and you've been out there every day of the week how much is the bjp's campaign in tamil nadu and i'm talking first of the overall picture not just of your constituency leveraging prime minister modi's brand equity constituency leveraging prime minister modi's brand equity we thank our honorable prime minister and all the ministers and the national leaders who have been visiting tamil nadu uh, quite often and supporting us this has given a moral boost and support to us and all the candidates are working hard in the field and they are giving a tough fight with the dravidian parties where the strong parties were quite half a century Uh, both of them uh, ruled and ruling the tamil nadu and a national force uh, which uh, which is difficult field it's a dravidian field but in spite of that uh, because of our uh, honorable prime minister every each and every one want our honorable prime minister to be the prime minister for the third time and another strength we have is we so, are fighting we are fighting with the right. prime ministerial candidate so uh, we are strong enough to fight with the dravidian parties okay now, let me ask you uh, a question in other words 
Will the credit for BJP's success go to the Prime Minister and the failure, if the BJP doesn't do as well as it is expecting to do, will that be blamed on Anna Malai, who is there on that truck with you? He's to your left. Of course, the Prime Minister is in the middle. You're there next to the Prime Minister also. How, how, will, how will all this play out? No, I, do, I don't want to uh, pinpoint like that. Honorable Prime Minister, uh, definitely his schemes has reached the people. But uh, it is the uh, local party uh, should take all the schemes to the people. But it is not only based on that. You know the muscle power, money power, and with what power we are fighting with. Because we are fighting straightforward, uh, straightforwardly, and we are a party uh, with uh, ideology, and we are uh, taking all the uh, steps in a straightforward way. But uh, the Dravidian parties, uh, known for their uh, uh, muscle power, money power, fight, and we have to fight with that force. Almost we are fighting with the evil force. So, uh, we are, the fight is very strong. And uh, let us see the results. But definitely our Honorable Prime Minister's scheme and each and every house it has reached. So, that credit, we, we have to give it to our Honorable Prime Minister. Okay, let me, let me also bring in uh, Rekha Patra ji. She's been listening in. Uh, uh, Rekha ji, आप विरासत से कंटेस्ट कर रही हैं बीजेपी के टिकट पे तो आपने तो बहुत ही एक रिस्क लिया है क्योंकि आपको तो अटैक भी किया गया है आपके साथ जो जो हुआ है वो तो हम बोल ही नहीं सकते आपने इतना एक स्टेप लिया है अपने लिए और आपकी जो वहां पर बहनें हैं उनके लिए जस्टिस लेने के लिए आपने इतना बड़ा एक स्टेप लिया है आप आपको तो अटैक भी किया आपके तो मुख पे एक वो स्कार भी है तो मुझे बताइए कि आप ये रिस्क लेने के लिए इतने तैयार क्यों हैं ये कोई रिस्क नहीं है ये हमारी प्रधानमंत्री जी ने हमारी एक संदेश कली की माँ बहन कि वो देखकर हमें इधर बसियाट लोकसभा की कैंडिडेट बनाया ये ये तो कोई रिक्स की बात ही नहीं है रिक्स तो थी तब भी जब पीएमसी के गुंडा भाई ने हमारी साथ हम लोगों को साथ माँ बहन की सब सम्मान आने किए थे तब रिक्स था अभी तो बहुत आसानी कर दिया उन्होंने हमारी सर पे आशीर्वाद उनकी आशीर्वाद स्वरूप हाथ रख के तो हमारी सर और भी ऊंचा कर दिया पीएमसी के जो हमारी मुख्यमंत्री को हम हमारी साथ नहीं दिया मुख्यमंत्री जी ने हमारी साथ नहीं दिया अभी अब हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने हमारी साथ दिया तो इसमें कोई रिस्क की बात नहीं है नहीं मगर रेखा जी ममता जी तो कहती हैं कि वो काम करती हैं माँ माटी मानुष के लिए तो आप तो कह रहे हैं कुछ और माँ माटी मानुष के लिए तो काम करती है कौन सा काम करती है माँ माँ बहन के सम्मान लूट करती है को छोड़ के यही करती है माँ माटी लेके इतना उन्होंने उत्साह दे रहा था वो जो काम करना था वो नहीं किए अभी माँ माटी लेके पड़ी है उन्होंने उनको क्या करना चाहिए था उनको ये करना चाहिए था माँ बहन की साथ देना चाहिए था अब वो उनकी जो वो गुंडा भाई ने उनकी थे वो अभी हमारे साथ जो काम किया वो काम उनकी साथ होती उनकी घर की कोई माँ बेटी की साथ होती तो उन्होंने क्या बोलती मैं मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता क्योंकि मोदी साहब ने आपको फोन भी किया था और आपको शक्ति स्वरूपा बुलाया था क्योंकि उन्होंने आप में देखा था एक जुनून तो मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूँ कि आप किसके खिलाफ ये लड़ाई लड़ रही है ये हमें शक्ति सरोवा बोला तो शक्ति सरोवा तो हम नहीं है हमारी पूरा पूरा जो बसियाल लोकसभा की माँ बहन है तो हमें इसमें कोई जो माँ बहन के लिए जो मेरा जैसी कोई गरीब घर की औरत को चुना उन्होंने कैंडिडेट बनाया इसके लिए उनको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद क्योंकि उन्होंने अभी जो माँ बहन के लिए कर रहा है वो हमारे लिए बहुत बढ़िया बात है क्योंकि उन्हें उन, उन जैसा अभी तक मुख्यमंत्री ने हमारे साथ नहीं किए तो वो अभी जो हमारे साथ प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया तो वो भगवान से भी बढ़कर किया है 
तो मैं एक ही बात बोलूंगी अभी जो टीएमसी की टीएमसी में हम नहीं वोट देंगे क्योंकि वोट देंगे तो फिर वो सिख शाहजहान जैसा क्रिमिनल अभी भी बहुत पैदा हो जाएगा तो हम चाहती है बीजेपी आए और हम तो यही चाहती है अभी एक जो बशियात लोकसभा जो हम इलेक्शन में जो वोट देंगे वो हमारी शादी साथ से देंगे और हम चाहती है बशियात लोकसभा हम प्रधानमंत्री को उपहार से उपहार से उनको सपना चाहती है नहीं मैं मैं, मैं पूछ रहा हूँ कि आप आपको वहाँ पर कई महल कैसा लग रहा आपको ऑन द ग्राउंड पूरा सापाट है हमारे लिए पूरा सापाट है सब लड़की नहीं है हमारे इधर भा, जितने भाई बहन है सबको सापोट मिल रहा है उन, उन्होंने जान चुकी है अभी टीएमसी की गुंडाबाइन के साथ कैसे लड़ेंगे हम लोग लड़ेंगे तो हम लोग एक साथ मिल के लड़ेंगे ये लड़ाई हमारा लड़ाई है हम लड़ लेंगे लड़ाई नहीं आ, आप कह रही थी आपने जिक्र किया है शेख शाहजहान का बोलिंग आपने बोला है की अगर टीएमसी वापस आती है तो शेख शाहजहान जैसे हैवान वापस आ जाएंगे आ, मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूं कि किसने शेख शाहजहान को इतना खुली छूट दी वहां पर देखिए मुख्यमंत्री जी का हाथ है मुख्यमंत्री ने की करवा रही है सब उनकी कार्रवाई है उन्होंने अभी ये माँ बहन की सम्मान अभी दाव पे लगा रही है घर घर से अभी भाई लोगों को घर मकान सब जला दे रहे है मुख्यमंत्री ने जान गई जो उनकी और एक भी फोन नहीं मिलेगा okay. इसलिए उन्होंने षडयंत्र खुला रही तो है मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूं क्योंकि वहां पर अब तक विरासत में तो नुसरत जहां थी मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट तो उन्होंने आपकी कभी कोई मदद नहीं की आपको कभी ऐसा नहीं लगा कि आप उनके पास जाएं आज नुसरत जी को आज हम साथ में पाते थे और हमारे साथ ऐसा बोलना होते तो आज हमारे मुंह खोलने का कोई जरूरत ही नहीं पड़ती नुसरत जी ने जो किया वो टीएमसी की गुंडाबाई ने और शेख शाहजन के लिए किया जो कटली की पुतली होती है आप जानती है ना वो वही थे वो हमारे लिए नुसरत मैम ने रेखा जी आप थैंक यू वेरी मच मे यू get all the power to fight this uh, very very difficult fight under very difficult extenuating circumstances reka patra ji thank you aapne hamare se baat ki let's go back uh, and speak with uh, tamil sai sondarajan your excellency let me ask you uh, the prime minister has attacked the dmk over its anti sanatan stand as as you know and and in fact he said this yesterday in his interview yet hindus in tamil nadu still have voted for the dmk in large numbers why will things change this time no actually anti sanadana is taken uh, uh, with a misconception in tamil nadu sanadana sanadan means it's a way of life but from the beginning from the periyar period the youth are brainwashed sanadan means it's discrepancy discriminating caste discrimination that is that propaganda has deep rooted in the minds of the people still they are uh, putting the uh, uh, painting the color of discrimination on sanadan which is not true so now we have taken forward our party has taken forward it is not the discrimination it is a way of life in fact it unites all so uh, so we have to deep root uh, the uh, Uh, the deep rooted uh, uh, feeling of the uh, discrimination as sanadan dharma so that is the problem so even hindus here uh, are way, made to believe made to believe that sanadan means it is discrimination and uh, one question we ask why the things will change now stalin is talking about discrimination but he does not wish the hindus on the important occasions like deepavali vinayagar chaturthi but our honorable prime minister and all our leaders wish all the religious friends on all the religious uh, functions celebrations so this discrimination he is maintaining he so, is not wishing so let me Hindus. ask you if it is you, you are you are obviously going into this fight without an alliance partner you don't have the aidmk for instance in your corner how difficult is that going to be 
but we want to take a stand we have taken a bold stand because the both the dravidian parties are the cause of the uh, misgovernance mismanagement in tamil nadu even though they talk about development strong allegation on corruption so we have to take a uh, different path so at one point of time in tamil nadu we have to get rid of the dravidian parties initially we may, would have uh, aligned even dmk aligned uh, with bjp uh, it is not that we, we DK, dmk did not align at, at all during honorable vajbhai ji's period dmk was with us and then after that madam jayalalitha was with us so they cannot say uh, totally exclude uh, that bjp is uh, is a different party because they have already history says they have already uh, had alliance with us but now we have taken okay. a stand we don't want both the dravidian parties okay. so we want an alternate force this uh, 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 this strength will definitely add strength to the people who think there should be an alternate force apart okay. from the dravidian that, force that, so that mindset of the people th- that uh, means that you're deciding to go it alone and test your strength there how confident of winning are you personally Yeah, I am very confident of winning because I have worked very hard. Honorable Prime Minister has come for the road show in support of uh, uh, me and the uh, other Chen- Chennai candidates, and this has added strength to us. And uh, we are uh, fighting very hard. With, even though it's a hardcore DMK seat, uh, but now uh, the, during the floods. the people the dmk failed to uh, rescue the people and the uh, anti incumbency on the present member of parliament uh, she did not uh, stand with the people during the floods and calamities and people know how i was working when i was the state president and even though i when uh, during chennai floods when i was uh, i uh, stood with the people I took boats and rescued them okay. the same places, and I am the water of South Chennai for forty years. Okay, so let me I, let me I, ask you, I, I how much, how many it. seats, how many seats will the BJP get in Tamil Nadu? What's the number? Sure, yeah, will be definitely we will have uh, more than twenty uh, percent uh, double digit uh, vote share. We will have we have. Uh, party has become very strong and emerged as an alternate force to dravidian parties uh, numbers exactly i cannot tell but number of seats will we will win okay well remember viewers that uh, okay thank you thank you uh, tamil sai sondarajan thank you your excellency for speaking to me uh, best of luck with your campaign of course sir uh, viewers uh, our poll the cnn news 18 poll had given uh, the bjp a big number almost five seats in tamil nadu let's see if our projection comes true we'll take a short break ahead of the polls prime minister modi gave the most explosive interview of the year to ani PM addressed a slew of topics and issues like the electoral bonds row, alleged misuse of central agencies like ED and CBI, and opposition's continuous questioning of the credibility of EVMs. Attacking the Congress Party, Prime Minister said that the Election Commission reforms were brought by the Modi government, and before that, those close to one family were made election commissioners, who later got Rajya Sabha seats and also ministries. The Prime Minister also said that Congress knows that it will lose in the. upcoming polls and that is why they are raising doubts about evms because it is just an excuse to explain their loss the opposition has hit back at prime minister accusing him of lying to the people of the nation hum transparency ki baat karte hain to vipaksh kehta hai ki ed cbi it sare ke sare idare jo hain इलेक्शन कमीशन को भी जोड़ते हैं वो कि सारे इदायरों पर बीजेपी हावी है और लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड है ही नहीं मतलब दे ऑलरेडी मेकिंग द ग्राउंड कि इलेक्शन जो है वो फेयर नहीं हो सकता इसमें एक भी कानून मेरी सरकार ने नहीं बनाया चाहे ईडी हो सीबीआई हो चाहे इलेक्शन कमीशन ऊपर से हमने तो इलेक्शन कमीशन में सुधार किए हैं आज इलेक्शन कमीशन बनता है तो ऑपोजिशन भी उसमें होता है पहले तो प्रधानमंत्री एक फाइल पर साइन करके इलेक्शन कमीशन बना देता था 
और जो उनके परिवार के साथ निकट जुड़े थे ऐसे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमीशन बने कमिश्नर बने थे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो वहाँ से निकलने के बाद राज्यसभा के मेंबर बने उनकी सरकार के मिनिस्टर बने ऐसे इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो कांग्रेस के बाद में कैंडिडेट बने और इसलिए हम उस लेवल पे प्ले नहीं कर सकते तो हमारा लेवल प्ले फिर हो ही नहीं सकता हम ऐसे बन ही नहीं सकते हम अच्छे रास्ते पर जाना चाहते हैं हम उस रास्ते पर जाना नहीं चाहते दूसरी बात है आखिर ईडी सीबीआई कैसे बनी ईडी वगैरह का आप देखेंगे या इलेक्शन कमीशन अपने एक कहावत है नाच न जाने आंगन टेढ़ा और इसलिए कभी ई वी An unprecedented and historic election. A vote that decides Bharat's quest for greatness. A mandate that paves the way for a billion aspirations. A verdict the world is watching closely. A battle for a rising Bharat's glorious future. Battle for Bharat elections. Equals CNN News 18. आज हमारी किसान अहेड ऑफ द पोल्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी गेव द मोस्ट एक्सप्लोजिव इंटरव्यू ऑफ द ईयर टू ए एन आई पी एम अड्रेस द स्लू ऑफ टॉपिक्स एंड इशूज लाइक द इलेक्ट्रोरल बॉन्स राव अलेज मिस यूज ऑफ सेंट्रल एजेंसीज लाइक ई डी एंड सी बी आई एंड ऑपोजिशन कंटिन्यूस क्वेश्चनिंग ऑफ द क्रेडिबिलिटी ऑफ ई वी एम्स अटैकिंग द कांग्रेस पार्टी प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेट दैट द इलेक्शन कमीशन रिफॉर्म्स वर ब्रॉट बाय द मोदी गवर्नमेंट एंड बिफोर दैट दोज क्लोज टू वन फैमिली वो मेड इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स हु लेटर got rajya sabha seats and also ministries the prime minister also said that congress knows that it will lose in the upcoming polls and that is why they are raising doubts about evms because it is just an excuse to explain their loss the opposition has hit back at prime minister accusing him of lying to the people of the nation <laughs> हम ट्रांसपेरेंसी की बात करते हैं तो विपक्ष कहता है कि ईडी सीबीआई आईटी सारे के सारे इदारे जो हैं इलेक्शन कमीशन को भी जोड़ते हैं वो कि सारे इदारों पर बीजेपी हावी है और लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड है ही नहीं मतलब दे ऑलरेडी मेकिंग द ग्राउंड कि इलेक्शन जो है वो फेयर नहीं हो सकता इसमें एक भी कानून मेरी सरकार ने नहीं बनाया चाहे ई हो सी हो चाहे इलेक्शन कमीशन ऊपर से हमने तो इलेक्शन कमीशन में सुधार किए हैं आज इलेक्शन कमीशन बनता है तो ऑपोजिशन भी उसमें होता है पहले तो प्रधानमंत्री एक फाइल पर साइन करके इलेक्शन कमीशन बना देता था और जो उनके परिवार के साथ निकट जुड़े थे ऐसे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमीशन बने कमिश्नर बने थे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमीशनर बने थे जो वहाँ से निकलने के बाद राज्यसभा के मेंबर बने उनकी सरकार के मिनिस्टर बने ऐसे इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो कांग्रेस के बाद में कैंडिडेट बने और इसलिए हम उस लेवल पे प्ले नहीं कर सकते तो हमारा लेवल प्ले फिर हो ही नहीं सकता हम ऐसे बन ही नहीं सकते हम अच्छे रास्ते पर जाना चाहते हैं हम उस रास्ते पर जाना नहीं चाहते दूसरी बात है आखिर ई सीबीआई कैसे बनी ई वगैरह an unprecedented and historic election a vote that decides bharat's quest for greatness a mandate that paves the way for a billion aspirations a verdict the world is watching closely a battle for a rising bharat's glorious future battle for bharat elections equals cnn news 18 Go powered by is ahead of the polls Prime Minister Modi gave the most explosive interview of the year to ANI 
PM addressed a slew of topics and issues like the electoral bonds row, alleged misuse of central agencies like ED and CBI, and opposition's continuous questioning of the credibility of EVMs. Attacking the Congress party, Prime Minister said that the election commission reforms were brought by the Modi government, and before that, those close to one family were made election commissioners who later got Rajya Sabha seats and also ministries. The Prime Minister also said that Congress knows that it will lose in the upcoming polls and that is why they are raising doubts about EVMs because it is just an excuse to explain their loss. The opposition has hit back at Prime Minister accusing him of lying to the people of the nation. We talk transparency, so Vipaksh says that ED, CBI, IT, all the authorities who are connected to the election commission are connected to the BJP and there is no level playing field. They are already making the ground that the election can't be fair. In this case, there is no one of my government's rules. Whether it is ED, CBI, election commission. On the top, हमने तो इलेक्शन कमीशन में सुधार किए हैं आज इलेक्शन कमीशन बनता है तो ऑपोजिशन भी उसमें होता है पहले तो प्रधानमंत्री एक फाइल पर साइन करके इलेक्शन कमीशन बना देता था और जो उनके परिवार के साथ निकट जुड़े थे ऐसे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमीशन बने कमिश्नर बने थे ऐसे लोग इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बने थे जो वहां से निकलने के बाद राज्यसभा के मेंबर बने उनकी Namaste, Jai Hind and Wanakam Kowai, the second largest city of the state of Tamil Nadu that goes to the ballot on the 19th of April. It's going to be the big story, ladies and gentlemen, this time around, because perhaps the political landscape and the narrative in the state could change with what happens here in this city of Coimbatore. The reason being, it's a tri cornered fight and perhaps for the first time around, wherein the DMK, the ADMK and the BJP all have fielded strong candidates and are at loggerheads. The fate of the BJP in Tamil Nadu could be decided by the fortunes of K. Annamalai who goes head-on with Singai Ramachandran of the ADMK and the former mayor of Coimbatore who's on the DMK ticket, Ganesh Rajkumar. It's an interesting fight. As usual in Tamil Nadu this time around, across the state, even in Coimbatore, the women outnumber the men. But we will focus on the first-time voters. We'll try and understand from them what's going on, what is their man ki baat. So join us on this fun journey on a hot, hot day. Just come.